freaky friends this is colleen and this is margaret and, and we're, we're the, the cousins, cousins weird. weird hi friend oh my gosh two weeks in a row i know we're Can recording on time ourself? and we're ahead we're ahead we're ahead we're because you're ahead. going to be hearing we're recording this and this the week you're hearing this will be two weeks from now right crazy it's like we're gonna be blasted ahead in time yeah time travel we're time traveling we're victorian ladies at Victorian ladies time travel i have to vent about something and it's annoyed it annoys me and it's it shouldn't but it does because little things like especially when you get to be close to 50 and you're like i'm becoming a curmudgeonly uh. crotchety person i go someplace I go to duncan and i order a signature churro latte okay. medium with almond milk and they so you wanted that you wanted an iced latte i'm like no i didn't say iced i said i wanted like oh so you want it hot yes i want it hot i hate that they assume i didn't say iced coffee i said coffee when did it happen that like and they said do you want that iced or hot i'm like i didn't ask for it iced i meant it's like it, it it annoys me it really does and they say did you want that hot or iced but they they ask though they don't just assume yeah but if somebody who wants iced coffee is going to say they want iced coffee. But they probably had so many people that didn't do that that they had to ask. Because I know. some people probably just said it and then they got mad at them for not saying it. But just coffee is one of those things that's made hot. So you say, I want coffee. It's applied that it's hot. But there's I know, so many I people know. that probably and I yelled do, at them. And I do like iced coffee. But if I want iced coffee, I say iced coffee. Right. I do too, but I know it just it annoys. There are a lot of people. It's that just probably anno- don't. it annoys me because yeah, you know, it's like I didn't ask for iced. I said coffee, just regular coffee. <laughs> I'm like my dad, damn it. That's what my dad would do. I just I, want coffee. I I like, coffee. You're getting old and crotchety, Margaret. <laughs> I absolutely am. <laughs> oh. I my husband took me on a little date. We went on a date last night. Ooh, and I'm usually. At my age now, speaking of olds, I'm a two to three drink person if if I go do anything anymore. If I drank three drinks, I'd be on the floor. I'm a puking. two to three. I can three max. But he just kept on saying, you should get another one. You should enjoy your... And so I did five. Where five. did you go? We went, to, um, we went to eat at this hop spot and I had a drink with dinner. And then we went over to Garland because they had live music and the band was really good. And we sat and I had four drinks there. Four drinks. Did your husband have to help you out? No, I, I guess I wasn't like tr- like super intoxicated acting, but I was like so tired. And we, I mean, we got home before nine, so we're. we're I old was people. tired yesterday too, and I didn't have any drinks. Well, I and I woke up this morning, and I said I I, well, I didn't couldn't even put take my makeup off when I went to bed last night. I didn't. <laughs> I hair. I just went to bed. I, I can't function, and I woke up. And makeup's everywhere. My hair is all over the place. And I'm like, I can't do all to be doing. He's like, you didn't have that much, and I'm like, it's yes, a lot for me. I don't know. It's he- like the hangover after a huge like kegger party when you wake up and your makeup smeared yeah. across your face. You're like, what did I do last night? You know, it's like. I'm too old for and this. And it's funny because I didn't feel really like hungover, hungover. I was, I hydrated before I went to bed. I was smart. Like, I'm not stupid. But I just felt, ugh. Shitty. Just like, ugh. So I was tired. I was tired this morning, but he did feed me food and get me coffee. Because he felt bad because I blamed him for, because I can't be responsible for my own actions. I have to blame <laughs> my husband. You did this to me. So he had, food, he had food and coffee ready for me. Oh, and then what did watched, he make for you? Or did he go buy something? He went to Wendy's and got a cold brew and um, their one of their breakfast sandwiches without the roll. That's what I am having. They have good breakfast sandwiches. And oh my God, Kylie, I know you can't eat them, but their breakfast potatoes are I know. I've had the them prior to not eating them. In the plant, on the planet. They're very good. I want them available all the time. They're like a skinny potato wedge, and they're covered with pepper. I know. They're good. Oh, my God. They're so good. I mean, I do like the little round hash brown things that I have at Dunkin' and at Burger King, but those potatoes from Wendy's are... Potato chunks. Phenomenal. They are good. And I, I did so get to try them prior to. Or something. Yeah. So they had just come out that the year that I stopped, I think, mm. eating potatoes, so I did get to enjoy them prior to. I'm glad, because yeah. they're lovely. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy them. But I, I just, I got, he got me something, a, the, the Baconator breakfast sandwich. It was mm. delicious. I just scraped it off the roll and 
ate the innards and gave my nice. dog the roll. I love your dog. He loved that. But... He was thrilled, yeah. Both of them were. Yeah, we, uh, it's March. Yeah. It's Irish month. It's Irish month. And, you know, it's funny, knowing now that I'm more Scottish than Irish, I'm okay with that. I yeah, still, I'm still, the Irish is still in there. Well, we're Celtic. We're Celtic. It's, it's all good. And, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. I'm, I'm not, it doesn't affect me. No. No. I was like, oh no, I'm not as Irish as I thought. I'm just as much Irish as I thought. I'm just way more Scottish than I thought. I am, I'm mostly just Scottish. I'm like 40, Irish. I'm like 40% Scottish. Yeah, I'm like 48%. And then I think it's English and then Irish. Yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a, I like to say I'm a, a very Nordic, um, Northern European white person. <laughs> yes, and I do have a little bit of the the Scandinavian in there. I do have, two, I think I'm one or two percent Nigerian popped crazy. in there. My mom has it too. Cool, isn't that crazy? I didn't get any of that. I th- I really feel like a lot of people are though because they say that the first it's human, the, the oldest body they found was it's in the, Africa. So they found those wicked old mummies in freaking China, and I'm gonna be once I have time, I'm gonna deep dive into that. Yeah, you need to. The oldest mummies they've found ever on Earth are from China. Crazy. Older than Egyptian mummies. Crazy. I oh, you it. know what? I was I've been looking for a new because I've been taking those tarot classes, and it's really good. I'm um, jealous. And. I've been like, I want another set of cards. I, cause I've only, I bought other cards. I just haven't ever connected to them, but this one set. And I'm trying to find another set that I really connect to. Because when he was talking about, like, if you need cl- clarification in a reading, it's always nice to have a second set of, you can use, I can use the ones I have, but another deck with you because maybe that same card will come back out again and it'll really answer your question. Like, say you drew, like, the Queen of Swords and you're like, I don't really get where this is falling in here. Let's ask for clarification. And he, she comes back out again. You know for sure that this is the message you're supposed to be getting, kind of thing. So I thought that was that was kind of cool. So I was like, I need another. I always wanted the um, the crow tarot, and they have a pocket version of it, which you know I like my little tarot decks. Mm-hmm. That's what I like to use. So I want to. I, I think I'm gonna order. Too. I think I'm gonna order that. But while I was looking for them, I found an Egyptian deck. I'm like, Margaret needs this deck. Yeah. It was so cool. There's another one that's like. Um... It's like a, a historical anatomy. Deck. Oh yeah, I want that one so bad. Yeah, someone I was looking through the reviews of ancient that one. anatomy or something. It's yes. like old drawings of, of anatomical ana- things. It's so body. cool. Yeah, I'm it like, was cool. And they have like I love this. it's old uh, drawings of body parts and, and body workings, but it has like like herbology yes. mixed in. Like I there's like herbs so cool. coming out of them it's and like, flowers I, like, and stuff. You can, it's a problem. Like, I go on Amazon, and I'm just looking. I have, like, 20 different decks. I have my, to have the same it's thing terrible. right now I want, cart. I want all of them. I want everything. I want everyone. I, I want all these Oracle decks. I have all, all oh, this I stuff know. And cart. I have really been, like, I have the um, the Enchanted Map Oracle deck. It's a Colette Baron Reed deck, and mm-hmm. I love that deck. I love it, and I found it on Amazon on sale for 15 bucks. So, here's my thing, and I, I forgot I was going to ask my teacher the other day, and I forgot. So, my deck that I love, that I've used forever, is the Everyday Tarot deck, but it's missing one card. And <gasps> I discovered it during, when we were going through our cards and stuff. I'm missing a card. So, I'm going to have to buy a new deck of the same one, because I love that deck so much. And I think I'll probably just replace the card and keep the other ones in case I need them. But, like, what does that do to your reading if there's a card missing? Does your it reading just, you aid null and void? Does, like, my... Moon Garden Tarot deck that had extra cards in it that were kind of like blank, and I this wonder. Have no, like maybe that. you got rid of them because it has a couple of extra cards in it. They're just kind of like nothing cards, and I I think you could probably. The only thing is, is if you stick a card in there from another deck, it's gonna be obvious. You know what I mean? Because it's not gonna match. No, I'm gonna buy the same deck. Oh yeah, because you love replace this. it because I love this that deck so much and just add that card in. And to me, it make, it's worth it because I bonded with that deck so well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I've been doing readings, so I don't know when where where it went. I don't know when it was, how long it's been gone. You should like, I have no clue. Check on a site because maybe you could just buy that card from somebody who has another deck that's missing yeah. cards. You, you never know. It doesn't hurt yeah. to check. I could check, but I could. Just, it's not an expensive one. I think no, it's, I think I found it on Amazon for eight ninety nine. I'll just buy the whole thing. And oh yeah, it's all yeah. good. That's not too bad. No, but anyway, I was just curious, like, how long have I been without it? And what does that mean for like the readings I've done? I guess it doesn't matter the if however you believe in tarot and whatever your belief system is, if you feel like you're getting a message from 
spirit or a higher power or your guides or whatever, they're going to send you the message however they need to. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't have that card, they'll find one that will represent what you need. So I guess it doesn't matter. But. And it's like, I, I love tarot and I'm not very good. Like when I do it, like read tarot, I still have to cheat and use the book. Yeah. And that's like, I don't want to have to do that. But like one thing I do like about Oracle cards is they're a little, e- they're easier, I think. And like you tarot. have to and read like them a, because they're a good, yeah, because they're different. Because they're not a set meaning right. on them and i think it's like a good intro because it gets you familiar with that you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's just like getting connected to that so this week i thought since the other two part two part one part two i did were kind of heavy um i was going to do something less heavy okay so we're going to talk about haunted covered bridge bridges Ooh, yeah a fun one and this i think i could do a whole series on haunted bridges in general i think i'm gonna do it like randomly you know throughout time i'll throw out a haunted bridge episode because this is just haunted covered ones and this is just a few of the haunted i didn't get into all of them there's just there's too many so covered bridges were popular in the 19th century offering protection from the elements to the wood structure so that helped their lifespan last that's why they built them that way Covered the, you see a lot in New England. Plus, it keeps the snow off the bridge. Yeah, you see a lot in New England and in 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 Pennsylvania because of the weather conditions. What was but that? they're also in other countries or other states. In the nineties, what was that movie? The Bridges of Madison County. I talk about that. Oh, movie. funny. Yeah, they, I never ever watched that movie. I've never watched it either. Not my not my cup of tea. Not my kind of movie. Thanks. They have a rustic charm. People love them. People will travel just to take pictures of. Covered bridges oh, know, because so they're pretty. so pretty. There's that cute one in Old Forge, even that mm-hmm. goes over the walkway there. Yep. They hold many stories of the past. They're they're from a long time ago. So there's like they've been around. They've seen everything, right? These silent standing things have seen it all, and some even have paranormal activity connected to them, um, from ghostly apparitions to phantom hoof sounds to that's um, some. That's some like, like a, a headless horseman. Headless kind of horseman shit. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they carry stories of tragedies of the past. So there's a lot of different stories that go around these because they were their connections from one side to something to another, right? So they took part in history. And Beetlejuice. That's how that couple dies. They drive their car off a covered bridge. Yeah. Into the water. It's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of um, like the headless horseman and things like that. They. Um, if, if what was it? I was watching, um, it was the vampire show. It was a, it had what's its face in it that I love. Anyway, the and that show, I can't even remember the name of it. It was on it was on that horror channel. He was like Dracula, but he wasn't Dracula. But there was Christmas themed stuff in it, and it was the guy who played Spock. And I can't think of his name, and I love him. Oh, he was in Heroes. Yeah, I love him too, Zach. I can't remember. It's like, yeah, he has like a name that's... Yeah, it's a fun name to say and I can't remember it. Anyway, he plays a vampire character in it. And in part of it, to get to the world that he's in, you have to go... I think this was that show. You had to go through a uh, covered bridge to get to it because it was like a portal. Oh, and now it's Nosferatu. Yes, but it was spelt... With like letters. Letters or numbers numbers in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. I didn't actually watch it. I no. had it on my thing forever. And so I never, good. And I, I like meant to watch it. And it was, I just it's never... on the Shudder. Is that the name of the... It was on... No, it was on like actual TV first. No, but that that was on that... Or HBO or something. It was on like a yeah. designated channel for certain sure, things. Or it was either HBO or, or a- A&E. A- something like that. Yeah. Um, I think it was A&E. Nosferatu. That's... Anyway, that... There, that was like a portal. I had a huge crush on him during Heroes, and he was a bad guy, but... I oh. loved him in Heroes. I loved him in everything he's ever been in. I love him. I know. He's so handsome. American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. He's handsome. He's terrible, but he's handsome. Okay. So I'm just going to share a few of the f- more famous, maybe, haunted covered bridges across the country. So our first stop, and I've mentioned this bridge before, way back when, Emily's Bridge, because... A friend of mine had gone to Vermont and when I did the episode about the about the cemetery in Vermont, remember? Mm-hmm. And the statue, Black Agnes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
she had told me about Black Angels and Emily's Bridge. She went to see them both. And she told me I need to do an episode on them. And I always wanted to do one on Emily's Bridge, but it wasn't enough to do a whole episode on. But right. I was like, oh, I bet there's other covered bridges that are haunted. And I started looking. I was like, oh, there's a shit ton of them. So we're going to stop at Emily's Bridge first. It's called, um, it's actually, no, real name is the Gold Brook Covered Bridge in Stowe, Vermont. It's, That's probably not that far from here. It isn't. The I bridge. Mean, Vermont's our neighbor. Is a classic covered wooden bridge. It was originally built in 1844. It spans the Golden Brook, and its primary purpose was to provide passage for travelers over the brook, obviously. That's most of them are for, <laughs> to cover water, like yeah. most bridges. A um, bridge, over cover, uh, bridge over water. Yeah. It was constructed with a roof and the sides to protect the wood structure, because that's what, why they did it, to protect the structure from the elements. And then wood wouldn't rot as quickly. Right. There was a lot of reasons. The haunting legend is associated with Emily's Bridge, revolves around a young lady named Emily, but the details of the story vary for depending on who tells it and when you hear it, which is how most legends go, right? Oh, yes. Legend says that in the 19th century, Emily, a young, a local young woman, fell deep in love with a man in a neighboring town. The two lovers made plans to meet at the Gold Brook Covered Bridge. How romantic. Yes. Right? And that, wouldn't you want to meet your love oh, yes. at the bridge? Oh, yes. At a covered bridge. Of course, they had to do it in the dead of night. Because they were going to elope and start a life together. The bridge is isolated and, and, and fully dark. Obviously, there's no street lights or anything like that. So it was a perfect place to have a secret rendezvous. Emily arra- uh, arrived at the bridge, so excited to meet her love. As hours passed, her lover failed to show up. Alone and heartbroken, Emily waited in vain, eventually realizing that she had been abandoned. Devastated by the betrayal... And she took her own life. She jumped from the bridge. Well, it's not like if, her the... par- if anybody knew she'd left, she would, her reputation would be yeah, ruined. Yeah, exactly. So Does after her death, locals and travelers began reporting eerie occurrences and paranormal activity at the bridge. Some claimed to hear a sounds of a woman weeping or footsteps echoing through the bridge. Others report seeing ghostly figure believed to be Emily lingering in the darkness. The legend of Emily's tragic love story and her ghostly presence has since become ingrained in the folklore of the region, attracting ghost hunters and those curious about it. I mean, obviously, my friend went there. She heard about it. Witnesses have reported seeing an apparition of a young woman on or near the bridge. They say that she is a faint, misty figure. Others claim that she's more solid or lifelike form. The ap- even the apparition has different stories. The apparition is often associated with the feeling of sadness or despair. So they get that overwhelming feeling of sadness when she's mm-hmm. seen. They've heard unexplained sounds around the bridge, phantom footsteps, disembodied voices, and in some accounts, the sound of a woman sobbing, like I said. Some have even reported hearing the creaking of the bridge wooden boards with no apparent source of what it could be. Creepy. Cold spot. Where the temperature drops suddenly, which we all know is associated with paranormal activity. They say if it gets cold suddenly for no reason, then you know you're in a haunted spot or there's a spirit. Even on the warmest days, there's people that have crossed the bridge and hit a cold spot suddenly. Mm -hmm. Paranormal investigators have noted instances of electronic devices malfunctioning or losing power unexpectedly while on or near the bridge. A common phenomenon reported in haunted locations um, is believed to be some form of spiritual energy interference. So that energy of the spirit is interfering with electronics, which we hear about like radios and phones Mm -hmm. making phone calls and static and the creepy stuff. Photographs taken at Emily's Bridge sometimes capture unexplained orbs or light anomalies. While skeptics often attribute these to dust or reflections, believers believe that it's a manifestation of spiritual energy on the bridge. Visitors of Emily's Bridge have reported unexplained scratches or marks on their skin, especially after attempting to communicate with or provoke Emily. Like, don't provoke her. Leave her alone. What are we? Why are we provoking people? Especially a sad girl who, you know, got stood up. The scratches are often described as appearing suddenly and without any visible cause. It's like, what's his face from Ghost Hunters? He's always like, come at me, bro. He's like yelling at the ghosts. Come get me. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve to get scratched. Right. It's important to note that while the legend adds a captivating and mysterious em- element to Emily's Bridge, historical evidence supporting the existence of a woman named Emily and the evidence described are lacking. 
However, no matter that, it still persists as a tale, and the bridge has a haunted reputation in its iconic location of Vermont. Now, I'm going to read the sign that's on the bridge. Ooh. For 150 years, horses and cars have mysteriously been clawed. People have heard a woman's voice, seen ghostly figures, and witnessed strange lights at Emily's Bridge. Photographs often developed improperly without explanation, and many have found wispy streaks or orbs appearing in photos. The story of Emily's Bridge is that Emily's angry parents were bidding her to marry a man of her dreams. In a fit of rage and sadness, she ran away with her lover to plans to elope. That night they were to meet, he never showed. Emily took her own life. Some say that she jumped off the bridge. Some say she hung herself from the rafters. Dr. Dave, a ghost hunter, investigated Emily's bridge. Here are some of the things he encountered. This is his quote. I began the search by taking my roll of film. This must have been a while ago. You've got a roll of film. And when I had a shot, the whole roll up, I set the camera down and began walking around the area where we had seen the biggest collection of globules in the previous photographs. Almost all of our pictures had had things in them where were located at the front of the bridge with a few globules <laughs> showing up in the inside. That's such a scientific term. Maybe Dr. Dave. Orbs. Yeah, I'm thinking it's orbs, but it's just weird. He calls them globules. <laughs> that sounds worse. I know. A globule sounds like it's slimy. It sounds like a goober or something. Yeah, gross. Dr. Dave started asking her questions and got more than just answers. As soon as I asked questions, a pain slowly settled into the back of my neck, while a pressure on the front of my neck made it difficult to breathe. The pain was excruciating, unbelievable, and I could hardly know how to describe it. I only affected the back of my neck because of the pressure in the front didn't exactly hurt. The pain shot from my neck into my head, and there was a roar in, the, in my ear that reminded me of when you hold your ear to a seashell. In that brief time that lasted an eternity, I stood there trying to focus and protect myself from this attack, and that shut off the pain and disorient disorientation that I was feeling. I could not do it. I was becoming more drained and exhausted and had to leave the area immediately. I hurried off to the car. I could barely see my neck hurt so bad. The noise in my ears had not stopped, and I could barely remember heading to the car and grabbing up the tape recorder from the car. That concludes our trip to Emily's Bridge. I said to the tape recorder before I shut it off. It was not until I turned over the car when the pain went away, except for the headache. Legend has that she hung herself at the bridge, and that is perhaps what I was feeling as what she felt last before she died. Well, that's grim and awful. That is grim. It was hard to read this because it was so tiny. I was like, (laughs) got old lady eyes. I can't read. I know. My God. And here's another quote I was just going to read. The story of Emily's Bridge doesn't go back to the 1800s, but rather much more recently in the 1970s. A woman by the name of Nancy Wolf Steed claimed that she is the one who created the story of Emily to scare local youth. There was a swimming hole near Stowe in Morrisville. She remembers making up the story of the bridge to amuse kids. At the time, there was a huge surge in the cult and paranormal in the flypaper that was popular culture, especially with films like The Exorcist that had recently debuted. She was also the one who came up with the name Emily. So she says she made created the whole thing. But many people believe that it mm-hmm. was a true story. Now, who do you believe? I don't know. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you, if you're, if people are seeing apparitions, again, we always talk about how energy mm-hmm. doesn't go away. So there could be, might, her name might be Emily and it might not be that story, but there still could be a ghost mm-hmm. at that bridge. The next bridge sure. we go to is the Sox Covered Bridge in Gettysburg. So you know this one's going to have some oh, stuff yeah. happening. Anything to do with Gettysburg. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania has a rich history that intertwines with the traumatic events of the Battle of Gettysburg during the American Civil War. And we know that the battlefield of Gettysburg is one of the most haunted places, holding of spirits, and you can hear reenactments of battle and all that stuff. So it's really not a surprise that the bridge near there is considered to be haunted. It was constructed in 1852 and spans the Marsh Creek. It served as a vital transportation link for the local community, allowing residents and travelers to cross the creek. The Battle of Gettysburg, a pivotal conflict in the American Civil War, took place July 1st to the 3rd. 
Sox covered bridge played a significant role during the battle as a key of crossing point to both the Union and the Confederate forces. The bridge witnessed intense fighting and its strategic location made it a focal point for military maneuvers. The area around the covered bridge saw intense combat with soldiers using the bridge as means of advance or retreat. The bridge, like many other structures in the vicinity, bore witness to the horrors of war, including death, destruction, and the suffering of soldiers. So, there's a lot of bad energy going on there. Yeah, doesn't sound too pleasant. No, over the years, the covered bridge has gained a reputation for being haunted. Local legends and paranormal stories suggest that the residual energy of the traumatic events of the Battle of Gettysburg has left an imprint on the bridge, which I 100% believe that could be true. Visitors and paranormal enthusiasts claim of experiencing strange phenomena such as ghostly apparitions, unexplained sounds, eerie feelings when crossing the bridge, leading to its association with the supernatural. Witnesses claim to have seen apparitions dressed in Civil War era uniforms, sometimes reenacting scenes from the battle or simply wandering aimlessly. The spirits are often associated with soldiers who fought and died in the vicinity. Reporting hearing phantom sounds at the bridge, such as distant echoes of gunfire and cannons being shot, and the clatter of hooves. These ghostly sounds are believed to be residual echoes of the battle, creating an eerie atmosphere that adds... What? Oh, look, you scared me. I was like, we're talking about ghosts and you're pointing behind the, me. The cat is going up the stairs like an old man. He is an old man. <laughs> He's like... Ugh. He's a heft his fat ass on the steps. <laughs> That's what I feel like going I know, up the steps. Oh, my step. God. I'm sorry, but he's like, right. I'm like, the cat's make, making me laugh right now. The ghostly sounds that are believed to be re- residual echoes of the battle create an eerie atmosphere that adds to the haunting allure of the bridge. There have been poor unexplained phenomena, including, again, cold spots, electromagnetic disturbances. Some visitors claim to have felt overwhelming sense of sadness or unease when crossing the bridge, contributing to the belief that the site's haunted. July 1st, 1863, Union forces strategically crossed the covered bridge en route to the historic Battle of Gettysburg. Following the Confederate defeat, July 3rd, General E. Lee faced the grim reality after losing 28,000 out of the 80,000 men with him. And he had a short of ammunition. like, insane to think about. Yeah. He had a, he was short on ammunition at this point, and he was in enemy territory. So he's like, we gotta get the F out of here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which you should. General Lee. Mm-hmm. Take it. Get out. Admit defeat. Yes. As as the they headed out towards the mountainous terrain near Cash Town on July 4th, the majority of the Lee's forces departed the battlefield. Some that were could walk, basically. If they were hurt or wounded and couldn't go, they just got left with the Union soldiers. Their journey led them across the covered bridge. This historical backdrop marked by the anguish of war and loss and the retreat of General Lee's army lays the foundation more to the haunting of the bridge and mm-hmm. the fact that they left p- people behind. Well, he left his own men behind that couldn't walk. He was like, ah, well, I'll just leave you there. You're fine. You'll just get in trouble by the you Union just, soldiers. You're going to die anyway. You're going to die anyway, anyway, so we don't care about Maybe. you. Maybe. But then, it was a crapshoot then. It was, because you don't know, because you either you miraculously didn't get some kind of infection, or you could have got your leg cut off and survived, but you could have got a a paper cut and got an infection and died. Like, there was no rhyme or reason to it. Mm-hmm. The most popular legend behind the haunted of the bridge is that three Confederate soldiers were hung from the trusses of the structure. At the aftermath of the Battle of Gettysburg, three Confederate soldiers found themselves accused of wartime crimes, which they're probably left behind from yep. the retreating. Severity of their crimes were resulted in a public execution by hanging and the trusses of the bridge with a wooden framework, became the ominous stage for their hanging. Oh, yeah, so. in the 1800s, they loved a good public they hanging. They loved a good public Or execution hanging. in general. Not just us. No, it all was over. Everybody. Everywhere. Everywhere. Just wanted people dead. We wanted See to have die. a spectacle. Now, others say that the soldiers were not hung by the Union, but were hung by the Confederates before they left because they were considered deserters, and they were caught and hung for treason. So there's two different stories who was hung on this bridge, but they say there was three soldiers hung, depending on who you want to go with. Do you want to say it's the Union soldiers hung them, or you want to say it's the Confederates hung them? It's Someone awful. hung It's awful either way. It's terrible. Because most of those were boys. Had no clue what they, they were doing. Yeah, but most of them were just young boys. So regardless of the reason behind 
who got hung and why they were hung, they've seen apparitions of the hanged soldiers. Their spectral form suspended eerily from the beams, which is horrifying. I don't like the thought of that. No. Some of those who have visited the bridge claim that have experienced unexplained physical contact. Reports include sensations of strange touching and hair pulling. No touching. No. As if unseen entities from another realm are reaching out to make their presence felt. No, I do not consent. Do not touch. I'm going to yell. Do not touch me. I do not consent to touch us. I do not consent to the touches. Why is it going to be creepy ghosts that want to touch you up? Like, mm. I don't know. No. They have also said that they have heard distinct sounds of horse hooves, evoking imagery of the Calgary and their wagon trains from that time period. According to local lore, eyewitness accounts, and some visitors have reported encountering a spectral figure or on or near the bridge known as the Smoking Ghost. He's the most popular ghost. The ghost apparition is described as a shadowy figure shrouded in a mist and often observed engaging in the act of smoking. Witnesses claim to see the wisp of spectral smoke swirling around the figure as if he's enjoying a smoke on his patrol. Mm Mm-hmm. Some speculate the ghost may be connected to the soldier and Civil War um, and just finding solace in smoking. That was, that's all they had, right? I know, really. <laughs> visitors will... Now, this is the creep, This is another creep, right? So visitors, if you take... If you go to visit the bridge, take a cigarette with you and place it on the metal railing outside the bridge. And when you do that, it will spin around and then appear as if someone's taking a puff. Do you have to light it first? You probably should light it for him, right? That's not nice to put a cig there. Give you a ciggy, but we're not going to light it for you. And there's actual, someone had a video, i got to see if I can find it again, of it happening. Like, you can see the cigarette moving. I would shit my pants. I know. I would shit my pants. Others have said that you can smell a strong smell of tobacco smoke on the bridge as if he's still on patrol. Well, lots of people are leaving lit cigarettes around. Of course that's going to smell like tobacco. If they're they're leaving a cig for them, you're going (laughs) to smell the tobacco burning. (laughs) Uh, there, Imagine the litter. The other probably tons oh, just, of hundreds but, of cigarette, half lit cigarettes have smoked. <laughs> the smoking goat ghost has received the nickname Tennessee. I don't know why. So the bridge still holds that ghost, the energy of the Civil War and the battle and the the soldiers who lost their lives. So that's the bridge in Gettysburg. Now we're moving on to one you've already just mentioned earlier: the bridges of Madison County Bridge. Yeah. The Roseman Covered Bridge, located in Madison County, Iowa, which I didn't even know that was Iowa. That movie either. was based on, but it is. For some reason, my brain, I was thinking it was Georgia. I, th- I thought it was California. But I pre- do they even have covered bridges in California? Who knows? I don't probably. There's, co- there's covered everywhere. bridges everywhere. Hi, Petey Petey. He's so He's handsome. Like I give up. Coming back down. Come on, bud. Come see me. I love kitty cats. Oh, he's stretching his little legs. Hi, baby. He wants a little pet, and then he'll be done with me. (laughs) All right, Pete, you just disrupted twice now. We're going to move on, sir. So, it's located in Iowa, and has a rich history dating back to the construction in 1883. The bridge was built in... Or the bridge was built to span the Middle River. It remains the original location, and it was renovated in 1992. It's 107 feet long. The bridge gained significant fame when it was featured in the novel The Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller, which was published in 1992 and later adapted into the film in 1905 starring Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood. Yep, I Never that. seen it. Can't ne- tell you anything about it. Never seen it. Else. It's not my type of movie. Especially but in the people 90s. People loved it. In the 90s, we were busy watching vampire movies and horror movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah not yeah. The Bridges of Madison we County. Like, <laughs> I remember it. Is Might there a hot vampire it. in it? Because I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. It was a hot vampire. Comes there. walking out of that bridge with a lady dead. <laughs> so the haunting is a local legend and folklore. It has nothing to do with the book. <laughs> the legend says in 1883, a prisoner escaped from Madison County Jail. A group of men came to the sheriff's aid, chasing the man to the Roseman Bridge. As the convict entered the bridge, the sheriff instructed the men to split into two groups surrounding the structure and to trap the convict. Mm. In the confusion of everything happening and it's dark out and everything else, someone discharged a firearm and there was a member of the posse were injured. They heard the convict scream when it happened. Then he vanished without a trace. No one ever laid eyes on him again. They never saw him come out of the bridge. They never saw him 
jump out of the bridge. He went in the bridge, never came back out. And everyone else was surrounding it, so they never saw him come out. He just screamed, and poof, gone. Locals and visitors alike have shared chilling tales of ghostly apparitions and unexplained phenomenon again on the bridge. Some have described shadowy figures walking along the bridge at night, while others have reported hearing disembodied voices. I always love that disembodied voice. It's like every haunting, there's disembodied voices. Of course, if there's no body. How do you, what else kind of voice are you going to have? Or mysterious footsteps echoing in the vicinity. So did the, is the convict one of the ghosts? Or, or did they get him? They got the convict. That's what I'm thinking, That's right? I'm thinking. Yeah. Because if there's more than one, there's shadowy figures. You know those shadowy figures get people. They, do. they pull you Especially down. If there's more than one, they tend to get real weird. I, this also has sudden drops in temperature and cold spots while you're walking across the bridge. Some have insisted they've seen flickering lights or orbs hovering around the bridge, creating an atmosphere of mystery and creepiness. <laughs> you think? Mike Sutton, the leader of the Central Iowa Paranormal Investigators, reported picking up an EVP, which is electric voice phenomenon, that said, just leave, during one of his group's investigations on the site. I would just go. I would just leave. Like, I would, you wouldn't have to tell me twice. Yeah, I if I picked up with someone saying, just leave, I, I'd be like, yes, I will. Thank you very much. Should I, I would <laughs> just leave? Yeah. Stories persist of trains occurrences linked to the events of 1883 with sightings of the prisoner or echoes of screams um, throughout the stillness of the night. Whether fueled by local legends or genuine paranormal encounters, the bridge continues to capture the imagination of those who dare to venture on it at night. So if you're brave enough to go onto it at night, you could see these shadowy figures and hear the screaming of the convict. Yikes. Mm Mm-hmm. Now we're going to move on to Stovall Mill Covered Bridge, which is located outside the town of Helen, Georgia. It was construction in 1895, and it has seen, it survived flooding and the wear of time. Um, it actually had to be repaired after a big flood. An earlier version was swept away um, in the eight, after, in the late, or must have been the early 1900s, leaving behind a tragic tale of those who lost their lives during the flood. Yikes. Anyone who's ever gone to the bridge at night has, says that they have seen the presence of lingering ghosts that have haunted since the, the flood. Inside the bridge, there were reports of the cries of babies and the clatter of horse-drawn carriages across the creaky planks. So this whole, so this specific bridge, the crying baby phenomenon, is something that's told across bridges, like in almost every state, there's a crying baby sound on a bridge and that is the most horrifying thing that I've is. ever heard that's terrible so the worst part of this one bridge and this is short it's all they got but it's the crying baby so the weird weirdest part is that every state has a wailing baby wailing infant cry baby bridge is a column and i could do a whole episode on cry baby bridges because when i started looking into it i wanted to die it's yeah. awful and I was like, I don't even want to read anymore about crybaby bridges. <laughs> Unless I don't want it's Johnny that. Depp acting out crybaby on a bridge. Oh, God. Then I'd be I'd down be for it. I'd be there for th- until the end of time. Yes. He, he could... Especially Johnny Depp from back then. Yeah, crybaby version of Johnny Depp oh, yeah. from when he was that age. Before this whole, you know... So now we're going to go on to... Sorry. No, you're fine. We're going to go on you to... You brought up crybaby. I did bring up Which is crybaby. one of my favorite movies. Mine too right up there we're going to maryland uh the jericho covered bridge it stands between hartford and baltimore counties it was built in the aftermath of the civil war in 1865 it's 88 feet long it serves as a connection between jericho road over little gunpowder falls wait what state are we in now we're in maryland okay right near baltimore or baltimore county we're like all we're adjacent to New like New England adjacent. Adjacent, yeah. yes. The bridge has seen the transformation from a horse drawn carriages to modern vehicles, so it still can be used to this day. It's because some some covered bridges are only for walking on, and some you can still, depending on the bridge and how big it is, you can take cars over. So this one you can. It's actually one of Maryland's last remaining covered bridges, which is cool. Like other bridges we talked about, this too is haunted. Obviously, or it wouldn't be on the list. 
People driving across the bridge have claimed that their cars mysteriously stop working, causing them to stall out right in the middle of the bridge. That's terrifying. I don't and like when that. they look up, they see feet dangling <gasps> above them. No, thanks. <laughs> That's not cool. I don't like that. It, their car stops in the middle. They're like, what's happening? My car's not working. And then they look up, there's feet dangling. Yeah, no, I don't like that. That's creepy. One of the legends says oh. that it is haunted by a young couple who were forbidden to be together. So they hung themselves in the rafters. So they lead together for eternity. Dangling feet. I don't like the dangling feet. The other one, this is awful, says that it used to be a lynching spot for capture, captured runaway slaves, oh, outlaws, and Civil War prisoners. Oh, so that awful. makes me feel even worse. Yeah. Some Gross. believe that the there was a grisly car accident in on the bridge that might be the reason why it's haunted with souls trapped in the why covered bridge Why can't it be all of day. them? And it could be. Now, if you're seeing dangly feet, someone actually must have been hung, hung there, there, right? Yeah. Another rumor about Jericho Covered Bridge includes a hermit is <laughs> that the homestead near the bridge in the 1970s who had a taste for hitchhikers, <gasps> a literal taste Ew. for hitchhikers. Legend said that he would dismember and eat those unlucky enough to cross his path by crossing the bridge. Finally, oh, the other there's yet another legend says that if you hear a lullaby being sung in the echoing bridge, it's the spirit of a mother who lost a child in the waters below, still no, searching for the no, afterlife no, for her I infant. Like, don't like that. So another... Cry baby bridge. Some say it was the mother who caused the death of her child, throwing them into the water and hanging herself from the rafters. That's why you see the feet. So just a lot of horrifying tales That's attached to this not, bridge. Yeah, it's light it's lighthearted this this week, well, Margaret. <laughs> it's not as heavy as a bunch of dead college students in the with weird yeah, dead babies lost in the river <laughs> below isn't isn't morbid at all. Uh now, whether you believe in ghosts or not, uh, whatever happens at the bridge is creepy enough for me not to go on at night. Let's just say that. Yeah. I wouldn't go on any of these bridges at night by myself. I'd park um, outside of them and look in. I yeah. I, like, I want to explore them, but I, I do. also don't want to explore them. I want to. I'll have to wear, like, like all my crystals. <laughs> fill my bra with crystals. You wear a talisman from every religion ever yeah. known on Earth. <laughs> yeah. With a, a smudge wand in each hand. Yeah. <laughs> get away <laughs> um lit so this is just a, a few of the stories of haunted bridges around the country but that leads to the question why are haunted bridges or why are covered bridges haunted and the par, part of what i think is, for one they're old they've been there forever right but when you look at a covered bridge if you walked on a covered bridge before which i have and you have because you, you've just been the one in old forge you've walked on a covered bridge it's dark inside, and it's old wood, and it's kind of creepy. Even the light of day. It's the whole, like, building aspect of it. You know, like, it's like a... It's a building, but it's not. Right. And it's like... It has the feel of a residence without being a residence. You know what I mean? Because right. it's, like, enclosed... It holds stuff in, yeah. kind of, right? So you have the old wood. You have... It's seen history. It's seen tragedy. Bridges always... There's always something bad that happens by a bridge. People, Always. Uh, every bridge anywhere has probably had somebody jump off of it. Jump off it, or a car accident near it, something happened near right. it. Um, Name me one bridge that hasn't seen a death at least once. And if you walk in the middle of a bridge, t- when you're walking across a covered bridge, it's dark in there, even during the light of day. Yeah. So can you imagine at nighttime, extra creepy. Not surprised people see things out of the corner of their eye or mm-hmm. things like that. You're feeling creepy anyway, because you're in this, you're yeah. outside, but you're not. So people take the semi-creepy feeling with the historical aspect of it and that's where these legends and urban legends and stories all come together and i'm sure that some of them are truly haunted because i believe things are haunted but i also think some of it could be just a trick of the eye or wherever because it's creepy in general just being old and dark and musty yeah. <laughs> the smell even, you know. Musty, yeah, musty smell. Yeah. So, that's my story of the legends of some of the haunted covered bridges. And I will do more cuz I when I was doing the research for this, there were like just bridges in general. Millions. Millions of just bridges in right. general, not even just covered bridges that are haunted. Lots so, this will be a little series I do over yeah. time. So, there's that's my story. Fun. That's it. All right. <laughs> if so, you want to see pictures of these bridges, 
excuse me, if you want to see pictures of these bridges, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram because we always share uh, pictures from our episodes on there. Um, sometimes they're horrifying and sometimes they're funny. Yeah, like the outfits. trend for this week. It's not great. The outfits that Margaret shared that they wore in the Olympics running were funny. Were quite fun. Now, the depiction of the person dying of, or going through the th- throes of strychnine, strychnine poisoning, poisoning were not funny. It was it horrifying. Was a, it wasn't even a picture. It was a painting. Painting. Someone painted it. Yeah. It's like, hold that right there. We're going to get the yeah. light just right. It's like, <laughs> what? How? <laughs> Yikes. So you want to make sure you're following us. So you'll see the bridges on there and there I'll set, put the links in the notes. I'll try to find some of the videos that I stumbled upon in the research. So you can see some of the captured of haunting. Some of them are real stupid and some of them are actually look like something could be there. And you, that's all I have to say. <laughs> if you uh, like to send us a message, feel free to send us a direct message through uh, in Facebook or Instagram. We can't brain. form Jeez. words. After a while, we just stop. Forming. I know. And, uh, Our brains stop. Or you can send us an email at thecousinsweird at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your weird stories or just reach out and say hi. We like to hear from you and we want to know what you guys want to learn about. So Let give us, us ideas. Yeah. Send if you want to support our podcast, always the best way to do it is word of mouth. Tell us, tell your friends about us, share us uh, on your social media. And then also, you know, rate you, us. Rate us. Give us a Reviews. rating, review. We On the platform that. of choice. Helps us. That's one of the best ways to help us is to give us a rating and a review on whatever pod, whatever uh, podcast platform you listen to us on. That's like the most incredible way to help us out. Yeah, because it, it, the more reviews we have, the more we're considered in the algorithms to push us out there right. to other people. And you also can support us through patreon.com backslash the cousins weird for a dollar a month, become a freaky friend, and you get a sticker and bonus content. And for five dollars a month, you become a tailbar treader to get a sticker, bonus content, ad free episodes, a yearly gift, and I say sometimes Skype, but we're really bad about that, so I don't even want to put that out there anymore. <laughs> we're going to have a meetup at a local place, place. either a bar or a coffee shop. So. You're a Patreon. We're going to set that we'll up. set that up we'll with you. you know. And when you support our Patreon, it helps us to pay for pay our for, services that we use. Yeah, the services we have to use, like our um, our subscriptions to re- where we get our research from, to get new microphones, to it's not, you know, paying our paychecks. It's just helping us keep us going. Right. Keep. We just want to break even. And we'd like to get mics, but we need to have a little yeah. more money coming in to do that. So. Yeah. So you can help us upgrade our equipment. Because yeah, we both work. We have to pay our job. Our, yes. We go to work, we have jobs, and we have to pay our bills. So, so. that's where our job money. This is our, our, our side gig, which this isn't is even a gig. Fun it's just stuff. a side thing that we do because we like it. Because we like it. And we're glad you like it. We appreciate your, your support and you stick with us even through our mess that we are most of the time. All right. Uh, that's a wrap. Stay freaky. Bye.